hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm really excited because we are doing the watermelon bracelet tutorial part one slash remake if you guys are long-term subscribers you know that about a year ago i did already make this video however that video is gone because another creator here on youtube copyright claimed my video because they thought that the pattern i used in my video was their pattern it wasn't and i told them that numerous times and yet they still claimed my video so and no it was not Masha Knotts or Alex Innovations they're amazing people it was not them it was somebody else <laughs> but I digress I just want to say quickly that if this person is watching this video right now and they want to claim this video as well that they know the pattern I'm using in this video is not your original pattern my pattern is from bracelet book your pattern is on friendshipbracelets.net I do not use that site your original pattern has 10 strings 20 rows the pattern I'm using has 9 strings and 18 rows you can see it right here. The person who made this pattern on bracelet book is the user Color Bomber. I messaged them privately and asked them permission to use this pattern and they gave me permission to use it. Not to mention I had a friendshipbracelets.net moderator reach out to me and tell me that any pattern posted on the site is able to be used for videos, blogs, vlogs, whatever you want as long as you are showing the friendshipbracelets.net watermark in your pattern. However, I'm still not using your pattern off that site but even if I was, I'm allowed to. So. Now that that's out of the way, here is the bracelet we're going to be making in this video. It's very, very adorable. This bracelet is intermediate, so you're going to need to know how to do forward knots and backward knots. However, it is a bit of a longer bracelet, so it might be a little bit more difficult if you have not done more intense patterns before. Since this bracelet is intermediate, I'm not going to be going in depth and going super slow with the instructions. So again, if you are more beginner, then this might be a bit of a challenge for you, but I still encourage you to try. If you would like a more easy bracelet, I do have a beginner playlist, which I'll link down below. And you can also find it on my channel if you want some more easier bracelets to try. As always, the knotting instructions, written instructions, I will leave them down below. And then also the pattern link to brace the book, which is where I got the pattern from. You will find that also down below as well as well as other helpful videos on how to start and end bracelets and how to make the different kinds of knots if you're confused. I love you guys and let's get into the video. To make this bracelet, you're going to need some embroidery floss. I use the Loops and Threads brand from Michaels. You're gonna need four colors, red, black, dark green, and light green. We're probably all gonna have really similar colors. For your red color, go ahead and cut two strings that are at a wingspan's length and fold those in half. If you're not sure what a wingspan is, just cut around 70 to 72 inches of thread. For your black color, go ahead and cut one string that's a wingspan's length and fold this string in half. Once it's folded in half, you're going to go ahead and cut one more black string that is the length of your wingspan length string folded in half. So here is my third string and it is just the length of these folded in half strings. I made it slightly longer so that I'm able to do the stitched loop seamlessly as you can see here. For your dark green thread, also just cut a string that is the length of half your wingspan. And it's the same for the light green thread, you're going to want a string that is the length of half your wingspan. I totally recommend making these strings the longest though because you use them the most in the bracelet. Here I'm just grouping all of my cut strings together, making sure that the raw edges are all on one side and then the little loop is all on the other side. You're going to have some extra strings hanging off because we had some of those single strings but it should look something like that and you should have nine strings in total. All right, so go ahead and at this point, start your bracelet. Um, I do have a video linked down below on how to start your bracelet with a stitched loop when you have an odd number of strings and go ahead and tape this down and this is how your strings should be set up. From left to right, it's dark green, light green, red, red, black, black, red, red, black. This is a one-two pattern, and as some of you guys know, for one-two patterns, we normally leave out our outer two strings every other row. However, this bracelet has an odd number of strings, so we have an odd number of pairs. So we're going to leave out one string every single row. So for row number one, we are leaving out our right outer string and then pairing up all of our other strings. All right, so row number one is going to be an entire row of all forward knots.
All right, for row number two, we're going to pair up all of our other strings, but this time we're going to leave out our left outer string. For row two, our first two pairs are going to be forward knots. Our third pair is going to be a backward knot. And our fourth pair is a forward knot. For the third row, we are going to repair our strings and leave out the right outer string. For row three, this is also an entire row of forward knots. For row four, I am repairing all of my strings, but this time I'm leaving out my left outer string. For row four, my first three pairs are going to be forward knots. And then my fourth and final pair is going to be a backward knot. For the fifth row, I'm going to be repairing my strings, but this time I'm leaving out my right outer string. For the fifth row, this is also all an entire row of forward knots. For the sixth row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my left outer string. For the sixth row, this is also an entire row of forward knots. For the seventh row, I'm going to repair all of my strings. This time, I'm leaving out my right outer string. For row seven, my first pair is going to be a backward knot. Then my remaining three pairs are going to all be forward knots. For the 8th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my left outer string. For the 8th row, this entire row is all forward knots. For the ninth row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my right outer string. For the ninth row, my first pair is a forward knot. My second pair is a backward knot. And my final two pairs are both forward knots.
for the 10th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my left outer string. For the 10th row, my first three pairs are forward knots. Also, from the reminder that if your strings are the same color in your pair, you can do any knot that you please, like this whole row could have been backward knots as well. It does not matter what knot you do since the strings are the same color. And finally, my fourth knot is going to be a backward knot. Next, for the 11th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my right outer string. For the 11th row, my first pair is a backward knot. My second pair is a forward knot. And my final two pairs are both backward knots. For the 12th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my left outer string. For the 12th row, this entire row is all backward knots. For the 13th row, I'm going to repair my strings, this time leaving out my right outer string. For the 13th row, my first pair is a forward knot, and my final three pairs are all backward knots. For the 14th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my left outer string. For the 14th row, this is an entire row of backward knots. For the 15th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my right outer string. For the 15th row, this is also going to be an entire row of all backward knots. For the 16th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings, this time leaving out my left outer string. For the 16th row, my first three pairs are all going to be backward knots. And my fourth pair is going to be a forward knot. For the 17th row, I'm going to repair all of my strings. This time, I'm going to leave out my right outer string. For the 17th row, this entire row is all backward knots. For the 18th and final row of this bracelet, we've come so far, I'm going to repair my strings and I'm going to leave out my left outer string this time. For the 18th and final row, my first two pairs are backward knots. My 
My third pair is a forward knot. And my fourth and final pair is a backward knot. So that is this entire watermelon pattern all complete. At this point, you can go ahead and repair your strings, leaving out your right outer string, and then repeat the knots all the way from row one. I promise I have hair. I look bald whenever my hair is up, but like, is it cute? It probably looks atrocious in the back, but we're <laughs> like, eh, it's fine. So that was the tutorial. I hope you guys all enjoyed this and found it helpful if you have any questions leave them down below as always i will have my faqs and helpful links and everything like that listed down below for you guys i will see you guys on my next video bye